<clears throat> Mike, how are you? I'm all right, thank you, Martin. I'm hoping to be more in the picture this week because by the end of last week on the vlog, Did I was you drift? just... I, I drifted away, a bit like that. All right. So I'm hoping to stay in the picture. Okay, okay. Great. Sheep and the goats this week, uh, Christ the King. So I've been thinking a little bit about the sheep and the goats. Um, now, um, Jesus says that the judge will be as a shepherd separating the sheep and the goats. And as you rightfully have pointed out to me before now, sheep and goats in the Middle East are not always as easy to separate as sheep and That's goats right. That's in right. Western Europe. They look very Europe. similar. They look very yeah. similar. They're not fluffy, <clears throat> white, woolly sheep. Nevertheless, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nevertheless, you can separate them if you're a shepherd. Yeah. Oh, yes. It's, yeah. it's pretty obvious. So my thinking about this is, what is uh, Jesus getting at in terms of sheep and goats? And I think one of the things he's getting at is the different kind of characters that you can develop. You can develop a character which is sheep-like in following the shepherd or which is goat-like in not following the shepherd. Mm -hmm. And actually, what we get out of our lives is the kind of person we become, the kind of character we become. And what God gets out of our lives is the kind of person we become right. and the character we become. Yeah? Yeah. So Why do goats not follow the shepherd? Well, that's a good question. So if you look at... if you, Well, if you look at what happens... Or don't do they? Do I goats have, follow a shepherd? I, I'm you, getting a bit uh, weak on my agrarian expertise. We're in a here. rural county here, and we don't know where the goats follow shepherds. We don't, but I'm going to make a, 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 a huge a theological point. A theological point <laughs> rather than an agricultural point that maybe they don't. But anyway, what becomes clear in the parable is that they are not acting in the way the sheep are acting. Right. Now I link this with Matthew 28. Uh, the the uh, risen Jesus speaking to his disciples saying all authority on heaven and earth has been given to me go therefore make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit now baptizing them is not just putting a bit of water on their head it's enabling them to get into the flow of the trinitarian life which is loving other centered regard which is self sacrificial and what we see in the description of the sheep in the parable of the goats is precisely this that these are people mm. who are, you know, serving others in, in that way. And what we see in the goats is, um, oh, we didn't know that it was you. Yeah. We, might yeah. have, we might have served you if, if we'd known, if we'd but realized. that would have been yes. egotistical. Yeah. Yeah. So actually the kind of characters that the sheep have become are those who are in the flow of the Trinitarian way of being. Or, if you like, they are with Jesus, uh, learning to allow Jesus to act in their lives mm -hmm. and through them. Okay. And, and that seems to me one of the big differences between the sheep and the goats. And uh, just to extending that, if they're, <coughs> if they're not aware uh, 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 of the ones that they are among, mm. so we didn't realise it was you, Lord, mm. um, they also seem not to be aware of themselves because you mm. would have thought that if you're a sheep, you'd know you're a sheep. If you're a goat, you'd know you're a goat. Mm. And uh, the, the, so, so that, that which they have become or that who they are becoming, um, they're not aware of. They it's haven't unselfconscious, isn't it? it, it? it, 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 it so, so that suggests a lack of awareness, lack of, lack of reflection. Um, or it could suggest a certain humility. It could, Do you know the it, Desert Father yeah, story yeah, yeah. about and this? It's, no, I don't. Let me tell you the Desert Father story. Do tell story me. About this, just I'm, quickly. I'm not going to be able to stop you, am I? So, <laughs> <laughs> so the, de the the disciple comes to his Desert Father and says, "Oh, they've asked me to go and preach the gospel in Alexandria or wherever." And I, I'm, I'm not capable. I'm inadequate. I can't go and do that. And uh, the desert father says to him, well, you see, my son, it's like this. Final judgment comes. The Lord will separate the sheep and the goats. And we will look to go with the goats because we will know of our weakness and our fallenness. And as we go, some of the sheep will turn and say, no, master, let them come with us. But for them, we would not have heard the gospel. So go to Alexandria. But it's right, interesting right. that he assumes yeah, he's with, yeah, the, go with, with the, the goats in his yeah, humility. Yeah. Well, it, what I was also, I mean, following on from that, what I, what I was thinking was, I mean, for me, this is a really important passage and it's, it's, it's resonated and somehow been with me since I probably went since I was a teenager mm. and a sense that somehow our, our care for others, our response for, to others, to those in need, to those on, on the margins of our communities and so forth, though the, the poor, the, 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 the stranger, the prisoner, that our response is fundamental to who we are in Christ. Mm. 
and that and that's you know it is the nature of it it we we pray it's the nature of the church that that we are known and identified as those who respond to uh to people in in need the hungry the thirsty and so forth mm. uh, but the the uh, whilst it's very it's it's straightforward to say that it's hard to do it's straightforward to say that but we can then get in the trap of not putting ourselves in the same category and and i i think it's it's when we i mean certainly i think for for many of us when we are engaged with those who we might see or or perceive as being in need yes they do have real needs but somehow we begin to recognize our own need mm. and the way in which through that mm. engagement they they somehow care for us and that it's our our recognition of their need that we discover Christ and and somehow also then discover that we share in a different way in that need and that Christ ministers to all of us, mm. and it's it's our rec- then recognition that Christ is caring for us that enables us to continue that reaching out and caring for others. But it's to me that's a, that's fundamental to the identity mm. of the church. Mm. Um, we don't we we forget it so easily, and we put ourselves in a oh we'll go and help other people rather than. Uh, we are being alongside those uh, with whom we, in different ways, share the same nature, uh, the same condition, mm. uh, and that uh, that it's it's recognizing that that enables us to um, to walk alongside. I remember uh, Gustavo Gutierrez years ago hearing him being asked, "How do we care for the poor?" He said, "You care for the poor by becoming friends with the poor." Mm. And it's through that that equal relationship, mm. rather than a what can easily become a sort of patronising relationship, that we mm. actually then discover ourselves in the presence of Christ and living in the kingdom. And, and just to piggyback on that point, which I, I really like about it's or who sheepy back, perhaps sheepy back. <laughs> who we are in Christ is what enables the sheep to be the way the sheep are because one of the dangers with the parable of the sheep and the goats it can, it can look like salvation by works yeah or yeah, justification absolutely. by absolutely. works but in fact what the sheep are doing is simply acting out who they are yeah. in christ yeah and of course this will be this way yeah mm. good thank you thank you